Hi again. Another book in the series on martial arts. Now, I was always intrigued by the tales of the gaijin, the foreigners who trained in the martial arts in Japan. Uh, people like Gary Spires, Brian Waits and uh, Terry, Terry O'Neill, when he attended the uh, World Championships in 1970, he came back with fascinating stories about the training over there, the lifestyle, the instructors, the attitude and so on. And um, it, it really fueled my particular uh, desire to go to Japan. But um, a senior instructor who made that trip many, many times uh, was Stan Schmidt. And he, he's written a book. Uh, in fact, this is his second book meeting myself beyond the spirit of the empty hand which was his first book uh, where it, amongst a lot of material about uh, training in his home country of South Africa he uh, made many 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 uh, training trips to uh, Japan now Stan uh, had a background in judo in South Africa in um, the Joburg area uh, and among the people he trained with was uh, the Robinson family, uh, the famous Professor Jack Robinson and uh, Norman Robinson, Doug and so on. Um, but then he, he, he took up uh, karate and um, th there, there wasn't any real high level instruction in South Africa at the time. So he decided to um, make the trip to Tokyo, him and his wife. And they went to JK headquarters at Suidabashi and um, that was 1963 so he describes all that all the training and then uh, he returned to south africa and with the contacts he made he later hosted kase sensei now kase was a real powerhouse he was a a chap who trained during world war ii when the training was to put it mildly very serious it was almost life and death and uh, they, they really um, developed the fighting spirit and he was a phenomenal instructor and then um, there was a tour of uh, in, uh, Masters Kase, Kanazawa, Inouye and Shirai. And they came to England in April 1965. Um, and that's when I first saw them. And then their next stop uh, was South Africa. And uh, uh, Stan Schmidt hosted an order sensei in Joburg. And uh, one of the things they used to do was... Um, he had a personal sparring session with, with the Nordic Sensei every Friday to prepare him for a, a competition and it was a very tough uh, sparring match, uh, sparring session. Uh, Nordic Sensei was renowned for his power and he had actually developed Ashi Barai the foot sweep to such an extent that he had once broken a guy's leg with it. So he, he was a real powerhouse and um, Stan was really devoted to Nordic Sensei as was Terry. Ted Terry was an a, a, absolute, um, absolutely in awe of an of an order sensei, and it was said of him that he had the fearless attitude of a hero and the loving heart of a child. He, he's sadly missed an order sensei. Anyway, so um, after that trip, um, the South African government was worried about uh, the spreading of martial arts, or particularly karate. They thought that if the African population um, learned it en masse that it might um, produce a revolution. Uh, obviously they should have been more worried about AK-47s and limpet mines but they put a visa ban and uh, Japanese instructors couldn't come to South Africa anymore so um, this led to a very high level of training uh, and gradings by the ja uh, of the South Africans. So Stan Schmidt went to uh, Japan again and he took the instructor course over there and one of the guys he encountered there was Yano who w was known as the animal. He, he was a, a bully really and uh, Stan had lots of encounters with him. Um, he, he did get his comeuppance on occasion. I know one of the South Africans uh, had to, you had to put up with it to get your grade but as soon as he got his grade he just battered you know, mercilessly. Um, I met Stan in, in Tokyo uh, in 73, him and uh, a couple of the other guys, I think um, 
uh, Norman Robinson was one of them, came to your yogi. And uh, what happened when um, foreigners visited, uh, us, us resident guardian had to uh, chat to them and make them feel welcome. And I was sitting explaining to Stan and the guys kind of what, what the class was doing. And uh, Higuain Sensi was free sparring Randori and um, he ended up on the ground and went into ground fighting and uh, Stan just couldn't believe it. He, he said, uh, he said none of his, our instructors would, would ever do that. They'd think it was too demeaning rolling around on the ground with a, a student, but it, you know, it's also, it was all part of training. So, um, he, he, he became a high, he passed the instructor course and was a third down and, and was the driving force of JKA in South Africa. And one thing I will say is that uh, I trained with a lot of South African instructors and I, I found them to be very, very good at analysing technique. They could, in, in gradings and in training courses, they could tell guys exactly how to improve, what they were doing wrong and um, what they needed to work on. It was very, very high level. The book is is really really worth reading i i, I just reread it for this and um, it's 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 a fantastic insight into the training uh, in japan and and elsewhere uh, at a very high level